guys, welcome to the channel. Today we have something new from Metabo HPT, Happy People Tools, High Power Tools, or what was the other one we call it? No, high Power high Tools. High Performance Tools. High Performance Tools. Hitachi. Either or, yes, HPT is the Hitachi part. Yes. Used to be Hitachi. Same tools, just different name, right? What do we know about Hitachi? Hitachi, we know, we've got a lot of tools from them and absolutely love them. They got the, uh, a compressor called the Tank, which is awesome. They've got one of the best framing nailers, oh, yeah. which is awesome. They're really known for framing nailers. Yeah, which, I mean, is great. And I'm, um, man, there was one other thing we just got a, what did we, oh, that router, router that, that plunge router, router yeah. which you're going to see, well, it's either on, we've already got it posted or it's going to be soon, but it's an awesome cordless router. Yes, yeah, so we like to call them the sleeper of tools because, you know, they're not crazy expensive. They're right in line with everything else. But it's like when you get them, you're like, wow, this thing kind of, you know, is a lot better than I thought, right? Yeah, exactly. Like nice ergonomics, stuff like that. This is their one-handed, their entry-level one, not entry-level, but their entry into the one-handed recip saw. Yes. Market. Yes. And I got to say, out of all of them, this is the most comfortable one I felt. Just the grip just feels good. I like everything about it. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about the grip? Well, I like the grip. Well, here's a couple things too before we jump into it. Is the actual the battery? So it uses their multi-volt battery platform, so it's a 36 slash 18 okay. type battery, which is cool. So it's interchangeable, which is nice. Plus, if you want to, you got that unlimited power like we've shown in the past. Yeah, you if know? you want to plug it into a wall, which is crazy. I mean, yeah. the saw might overheat though if you're going like three hours straight. Yeah, I mean, any any smart tool will too. So it's got the battery uh, status fuel gauge on there, which has got four bars, so 25% each time, if my math is correct. Wow. Um, smart. Like, like Dan was saying, it's got a nice over molded uh, grip to it. It's one hand, it's one finger actually, one finger control. I've seen some with two. I like the one finger personally. Yeah. You know, what do it's you just mean two? It fits nice. Out? Like we're almost where two lay on the trigger. Oh yeah, yeah. You know I, I like mean? it. I like this. Easy to access. You know, the lockout feature. If you don't want to hit it, if you're going up a ladder or something like that, or you're holding in it in your bag. Or how many times? I can't tell you how many times I've been carrying a bunch of tools together, and then all of a sudden it's slipping on your finger and it's going off. You know. Um, one thing is that's pretty cool that I like about this is the adjustable shoe. I don't know if they all have adjustable shoes or not. You know what? I don't think the Milwaukee does. That's what I'm saying. And I like this because... The first gen did it. I don't know about their brush. Yeah, legs. I don't know. But what's nice is you get more use of a blade then. So you're not cutting in just one point. And it's a nice long extension on there. I mean, from right here to yeah. all the way down. So you're getting... Blades are expensive nowadays. Right. You know, so you want the most use out of it. They're not like... I don't think they're the throwaway, you know, accessories like they used to be just because they last longer and they're expensive. Right, so right. get the most you can. The cool thing too, you guys, with this adjustment is this is the only recip saw that will that we know of that will also handle a T-shank uh, jigsaw blade. So when you put that T-shank bla T-shank blade in there, this is going to give you depth adjustment. Which is really cool. Now, one thing now seeing like with the T-shank um, jigsaw blade, you it's it took us a while to kind of figure it out. Right. You have to push down and you're going to feel a little lock pin in there. Once you push on that, you can let go of the chuck and boom, it locks it in there. Yeah, basically the way nice. I explain it is once you open it up, you'll see a little uh, recessed area in there. That T-shank will just lay right in that recessed area and then you can just lock it. As long as you're in, locked into that, that recessed area, you're good to go. Yeah, yeah, and once you do it once or twice, you're like, oh, it's easy. You can do it really quickly. Like, yeah, it's not, yeah. It's it's it took us a while at first, so we thought it was broken. We're like, what? This yeah. thing doesn't go in there because you just want to shove it all the way in when really you're just shoving it like almost like three quarters of the way then it locks right yes um as for power you know i mean it's a compact saw right it's, it's about what you expect for power on, on something compact like that it is is this one brushless eric um i don't know if this one's brushless is it i don't know but i do want to go over a couple things on i don't think too. it's brushless because i see a can motor in there okay um it does have this big lip thing on the back too I don't know what that's for, but probably to prevent it from like getting hit and knocking the battery off. Oh, something yeah, like yeah. That. Um, go ahead. So a couple things. So it's only 2.9 pounds, which I don't know if that's like compared to the other ones, but 2.9 pounds, that's without a battery. It's pretty light. Yeah. Weight, you know, right. it's not, it's not. Um, only 13.8 inches, which means you can get in between, you know, it's get it in between studs, which is nice. If you got to cut pipe, you got to cut studs, you got to do yeah. something like that. Um, 3,200 strokes per minute. Um, I think that's, I mean, that's yeah, the I mean, that's that about I, it. I really I mean, care about. You know, you know we've I mean? seen these before. They've been on the market. This is just in Metabo HPT flavor. I think they really knocked it out of the park with the ergonomics of it and the size of it. Uh, I just like that a lot, you know, and it's, it's a nice smooth saw, right? 
You know when you pull it, sometimes you yeah. just feel that quality. It's like in an ATV the other day, I started one and then I started a Chinese one and then I got into like a Japanese one and it was like night and day the way it just started and purred. It was kind of crazy. I think, isn't Metabo HPT Japanese? I thought they were. Yeah, I think Metabo HPT. Hi Koki, you guys, is the uh, parent company yeah, of Japan. them. Yeah, yeah, Japan. So, I mean, Japanese are known for their tolerances. They're like the, you know, the Asian version of the German tools, right? Mm -hmm. Cause the oh, they got really high quality stuff. And, like, to go back to the point you're talking about is, like, good quality tools, but it's not, like, overly priced. 116 bucks for this. Wow, yeah, bare, bare tool. Bare, bare tool. Yeah. Which is not bad. Right. You know? Yeah. It's not a bad tool, you guys. If you're in the market for a one-handed resip and you already have Metabo HPT, it's something to look into. If you're just jumping into the, uh, you know, arena, it's also something to look into. Yeah. But it's a great tool to keep in your bag. And, you know, for those quick cuts, you're not going to be demoing a house with this. You're not going to be, you know, uh, cutting steel pipe all day with it. It's just one of those... It's in your bag. You can get it out. You can make a couple quick cuts. That's what these tools are really designed yeah, for. Yeah, it's nice for overhead. It's nice yeah. for in tight spots or something like that. And one thing that actually... You can hold your work and cut. This yes. Nice one thing that actually kind of fooled me a little bit is the LED light. It's extremely small. I'm thinking, well, that's not going to really do much, you know? Because I'm so used to seeing those big square right. ones. For such a small LED light, it does a good job, like, yeah, shining up your work, you yeah, know? Yeah, it does. I mean, you can't see it there, but... It does. Do, I know. see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So good stuff, you guys. Metabo HBT. Check them out. What do you guys think? Comment below. I know what everybody's going to say. Let's throw it up against the Milwaukee. Uh, maybe we will. I think it's going to be thrown up against the Milwaukee non-brushless version, though, for obvious reasons. The Milwaukee fuel brushless one, while more powerful, is a lot bigger. I was just looking at that. I don't know if you can see here, but uh, the Milwaukee one's fatter. Yeah. You know? It has a fatter grip. This is yeah. my favorite ergonomic by far. Um, you know, is it more powerful than the Milwaukee? We don't know. We'll have to throw it up against it and we'll, you know, tool fight, something like that. But but if you're already part of the Metabo line and you're looking for a nice saw, this is a nice addition because like we've touted tons of times before is that, you know, a lot of these power tool manufacturers don't make the best of everything. You know what I mean? So you want to actually research before you actually go out and buy a tool. This one, if you're looking to buy something, it, it's a good buy. Right. You Metabo know? HPT is just kind of known. Hitachi is known for reliability and, you know. That's the other thing I totally forgot about. That what? Known for. Um, or no, never mind. Never mind. What were you going to say? Grinders. But that's... That's the original that's Metabo. That's the, original that's the, original that's that's the regular the Metabo. Remember, you guys, there's Metabo and Metabo HPT. We know it's confusing. We think you guys got it down now. Um, you know, it is confusing. Yeah. It yep. is confusing. But whatever. You guys know. HPT, Happy People Tools. Click like, click subscribe. Peace.